Welcome back to the TT Podcast. We are here with Mike Boob. If you've not heard or seen the first part, make sure you head back now and listen to it. Boothy, we ended, well, we kind of ended just talking about journalism and we're going to fast forward into your TT career now because okay. I think there's there's a lot to talk about in that. Start of the TT in 2016. Yeah. What possessed you to get go to the TT? A few things. It was, so, uh, up until up until the time... Uh, race at the TT I'd been doing I was in stock Stockhausen in BSB mm-hmm. and I I wanted to I, I felt like I was ready for something di- I didn't want to stop racing bikes I felt like I was maybe ready to try something different and I, I was in I was te- I was in uh, Cartagena actually doing you know the, the pre-season test that a lot of the BSB lads yeah. do so I was in Cartagena and I was sharing a garage with Keith Amore and I got chatting to him and he um he just we just spoke about the TT the whole time and it kind of he didn't tell me to go and do it but it it sparked something in me that I thought actually do you know what I like the sound of that I really like the sound of that so um I kind of started making inquiries about going to do it and um yeah it, it kind of I spoke to a few people and and ended up ended up finding someone who was happy to to go and take me over there for the first year. And uh, so we had a BMW and a CBR 600. It was all a bit, la- ended up being a bit last minute, to be honest with you. And it probably wasn't as good as it ought to have been um, with the bikes, but we got there. We got there and we had two bikes that didn't, that, that you know, lasted for two weeks. And my first year was really nice weather, just like last year. Mm-hmm. So I got loads of laps in practice week. Uh, so by the time we went to a race, I... I felt like I knew my way around and I'd done all the homework as well. I'd spent probably I don't know, six, seven times. I'd go over a weekend at a time and just do laps in a car, you know, with Milky and, and Johnny and stuff. And um, So I felt like I knew my way around. I'd watched a million onboards. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it went really well. I was actually fastest newcomer in the first year, which was which was quite cool. So I got to hold a big trophy up and nice. everyone thought I was really fast for 15 <laughs> minutes, which was good. <laughs> ah. So from that was it was it from the moment that Keith kind of planted that seed that you started watching on boards and that you started thinking right if I'm going to do it I need to learn it yeah to to be honest I actually fancied doing it when I was about twenty because I because I'd been over uh, for just like a just a lads holiday mm-hmm. with some mates had a had a a, a week long piss up watching the bikes and thought this is fucking amazing like yeah I've got to do that but at the time I was crashing an awful lot like right. loads. And, um, yeah, I, I spoke to my dad. Like, my dad's been, like, always been, like, a big part of my racing. He's always come along with me and stuff. And, and well, not just come along with me. He's been, like, my crew chief, mechanic, you know, truck driver. So I spoke to my dad about it, and he said, look, you, 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 I'm not going to stop you going to the TT. Like, you're a big boy now. You can do it if you want. But, like, I, I'm not being part of it because he, he knew that I wasn't ready. Um, and I think he knew that, if he wasn't up for it, I wouldn't be up for it. Mm. Um, so he kind of, he, he dissuaded me from doing it when I was about 20. But when I was a bit older, I'd calmed down a lot. And I, was a, I wasn't any faster, but I was a better rider. I would I could ride without crashing. So yeah, when I was a bit older, and he, yeah, I, I persuaded my dad that it might be a good idea. So, Do you think that's, sorry, Booby, do you think sorry. that's from the amount of riding that you started to do in because of the riding for fast bikes, riding various different bikes, Different no, styles, or I, was it just because you got older and you actually it was, learnt the craft? I thought it was older. I just got older and less. Um, I don't want to say less less bothered, but a little bit less. Like a little bit less. I need to win every race. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, yeah. it was more. It was, I think we talked about it before. Do you know when I when I stopped racing to be a world champion and started racing to enjoy it? Yeah, I stopped crashing because I was just a lot more chilled out about it. Also, yeah. Um, yeah, it, after, after that kind of watershed moment, if you like, everything just became a bit easier and stopped crashing. It wasn't going any slower. Um, so yeah, we went and went and did the TT, uh, and I loved every second of it Yeah, and, and had a real good week. Finished, did, did the five big races and finished all the races. So, you know, it was, it was awesome. And like, you were hooked from that yeah, moment. Hooked, that was yeah. it. Yeah. Although, uh, it, it all went to shit, to be honest, the second year. So so we'd had a real good first year and, and I was supposed to race for the same team, but the, the, the boss had some stuff going on at home and um, kind of 
probably probably should have let me know a little bit sooner that it wasn't going to happen because mm-hmm. um, I'd like I had the, the fortnight booked off work my truck was booked on the ferry I was all for it like I had a set of leather a new set of leathers made you know I was yeah. racing the TT um, but then I think it was like 10 days before the cool. start of the event what it, yeah the, uh, yeah the bike's not ready and, so, and and up to that point he'd been saying the bike was going to be yeah, ready yeah yeah we knew that we knew it was when it needed some work yeah um so i was kind of you know pestering a little bit but but he said it he said we'll be all right um and we weren't which was a, a real kick in the tits cuz i felt like the, after the first year we could have had a real good run so the year after that 2018 me and my dad decided right we'll just do it ourselves we had an old zx10 that i'd raced in in British a few years before. Yeah. Want a real fast bike. It was an old 2020 one, so uh, t- uh 2012 one, sorry. So it was a, it was an old bike but better than nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh and we borrowed my mate's Triumph um and just did it ourselves so me and a few mate me to and race, my dad and to a few race mates, super sport. To race super yeah. sport, yeah. So we did super sport and then the three big bike classes um on on my on my old ZX10. And it was meant it wasn't Re- it wasn't fast enough to be mega competitive, but it meant I got the laps and I got went quicker each time I rode mm-hmm. it, and it just yeah it was, it was mint, and it, it kind of showed that we we could do it ourselves. You know we didn't need the first year was good because we had a team of people or a couple of people anyway that had been there before and done it, so they knew how it worked. And yeah. the TT is a little bit different to like a club like a club race at home or BSB or anything. It's you know there's there's stuff that if you don't know, you, do you know what I mean? It's it, it's just a it's a weird place to go. So, but once we'd done it, we knew how it worked. So, yeah, twenty seventeen we missed. Twenty eighteen we went on my old ZX ten and did all right. Um, I think I was nineteenth in the you, senior race. I think race. you had the best weather then because sixteen was good, eighteen was mint. Yeah, yeah, that's Before right. Yeah, weeks. eighteen was a really good one. Yeah, um, and then nineteen we went back. So we bought a new, or well, not a brand new bike, a newer bike for. Oh, big bike, I should say. New was yeah. X10. Thought it's ready. It's, it's I, I've done it a couple of times, and I thought I'm I'm comfortable with it now, and not 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 ready to start really pushing. But I just thought I can I can do this now. Like I'm like we'll we'll get a we'll get a nicer bike. So we went on a um that was a 2017 ZX10, um and yeah, I had another mint year on that. I think i think we had shit weather that year as well 19 19 yeah, it was on and off, 19, yeah. On and off yeah. so we missed a few sessions um but still the 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 i think i ran out of fuel on one of the bikes which was a bit of a pisser but on the little bike but yeah on the uh on the zx10 um again faster each time i rode it and i think i was 14th in the senior that year so i was like made up with that like mm-hmm. I, was, I thought that's a mint result we can go next year and you know, build on that, and maybe, maybe if I get in the top ten, I'll I get the opportunity to ride a, a faster bike. Yeah. But then, obviously, twenty twenty didn't happen. Twenty twenty one didn't happen. Um. So we kind of like, yeah, it was. I felt like by the time we got back in twenty twenty two last year, although I'd been racing at the TT since twenty sixteen, I don't actually done it through. I should have done it five times. Yeah. But I don't yeah, yeah. done it. So this should have been my six TT, and like we're like I'm. Um, you know, ready to start having a decent result, but I'd only done it three times, so um, which you know, I, three three really good TTs, and I'd, I'd kind of built my pace each time and was ready to go a bit faster. But I wasn't, um, I didn't feel like I was where I should be. Had we have had, I mean, it, the oh, 17 people raced, but 20 and 22, sorry, 20 and 21 were right offs for everyone, wasn't it? So it's not yeah. like anyone's getting in front of me, but um. But you're you're getting older as well, so I fit, you know. So with your with your TT career, obviously you'd you'd lost your let's call it a competitive edge when you decided you were going to start enjoying your racing. Mm. Once you started to go back to the TT and learn something new, did at any point that competitive edge come and go right right? I want to I want to push for top ten. I want this is something I could I could do a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It, not as much as it I, I'd had when I was in my teenage years. You know, when I wanted to win everything. You were more mature with it. I was more mature, and 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 I was more realistic with my goals. I think, um, you know, the the, I think the first year I was top thirty, second year I was top twenty, third year I was top fifteen. So like my goal would have been top ten. But then, in all fairness, 
TT is a funny thing, isn't it? Like you, you, the 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 results don't always kind of match your performance. Like if I'd have gone, if I'd have gone two second up to uh, two mile an hour faster, but only finished eighteen, I would have been happy with that. Yeah, you know, because if I if I've if I'd have done, but I, I was more interested in my own performance and 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 riding better than than where I finished because that it's. You know, it depends what how everyone else does, doesn't it? You know, if you have a load of people crash, then you have a better result. If you don't, then you know. So it's, it's more your own. It's more your own level and lap yeah. time rather than yeah. the end race exactly, result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's almost irrelevant to a degree the the race result. Yeah, if it, you're getting faster. It's, and yeah, you're... it sort of is. Yeah, apart from everyone else is interested where you finish. Do you know? At the TT, people who are involved in it are, are interested in maybe how fast you've gone as well as where you finish. But anyone outside the TT circle or bike racing circle, they're not interested in how fast you went or how you felt on the bike or, or whether, you know, whether you had a more consistent pace or whether the bikes, you know, were performing well or any of that bollocks. They want to know where you finished. Mm. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and did you win? Did you win? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you go, no, I finished 12. Yeah. Doesn't sound that good. But, no. but like you say, yeah. you went two mile an hour quicker in your lap. and Yeah, yeah, the, all that stuff. Yeah. And, and I think at the TT, it's, you know, I, I consider a, a 14th place finish in the senior a really good result. I was really happy with that. Mm. When you go home and tell people that, they don't realise that actually there might be, you know, the oh, and now I think it's only 60 people can start a big bike race. But before it was like 80 people could start yeah. a big bike race or mm -hmm. whatever the number was. You know, to finish 14th out of all them, you know, oh yeah, that, that's that's what maybe people don't realise. So, um, as well as the fact that you know, just to, I mean, I guess a lot of people will say that one of the hardest things about TT, TT racing is getting there in the first place. You know, so just just to get there and set off down Glen Crutchy Road on a on a on a whether it's your own bike or someone else's bike, yeah. that's um, that's almost as much of a buzz as as finishing a race. Mm -hmm. um, and and all that stuff is, you know. We all like to tell people at home that we've done well and we've finished in the top ten or finished fourteenth, but that's great. You get a bit of a buzz from telling people you've about a good result, don't you? But nowhere near as much of a buzz as actually riding the bike. I don't think, but maybe that's because I've never won one. You know, maybe winning one's the best thing in the world. But and telling people you've won one. Is there anything else that floats your boat apart from motorbikes? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, um, I like, I like. I did a bit of skydiving a few years ago. Oof. Um. Because I just what, fit... is that a high side or <laughs> yeah <laughs> both both yeah. I know you said you're a big crasher. Yeah. <laughs> I did about I did a bit of I did a bit of skydiving. Um, I'm, I'm I like aeroplanes. I like well, that's aeroplanes. That's the point I was getting out a little bit. So yeah. What's the big interest in Spitfires? Um, it, do you know what? It's the, the I like history. I like anything to do with the Second World War. I love aeroplanes. Um, or anything to do with aviation. Um. And do, you, do you fly? I'm learning to fly. Yeah. What? Just a little um, C42 micro light. Um, Flex. No, no fixed wing. Where are you learning that of? Uh, uh, Straven, Straven Airfield, just near uh, Kilmarnock. Do you know it? No, I know. I know where it is. Roughly, yeah, just south of Glasgow. I've yeah. never been in it. No. Yeah. Have you been up in a Spitfire? No, I haven't. I'd absolutely love to. My 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 great granddad used to fly Spitfires in the Second World War. Um, oh. I never never got to speak to him about it because he 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 died in a Spitfire crash, literally like days after the war finished, okay. um, which was a, a bit of a bit of a bummer. But um, I I don't know I, I didn't actually I didn't actually know that until I was a little bit older and I was already I already had like a, a bit of a bit of a love of airplanes and stuff. Mm. So to find that to find that out that was quite cool. What's but, so good about flying? I don't know. I, I, it's Part of it's from getting from A to B like, way faster than anyone else. I love like just being able to look down, look down on people someday in the back gardens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's. I just, voyeurism. I just love it. I, I remember when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a pilot, like a, a young kid. And my mum said to me, um, she was obviously trying to sort of make me work hard at school. And she said, if you want to be a pilot, you've got to like do all your homework and you know work really hard. I remember thinking, nah, fuck it then. <laughs> Plan B. Yeah. I'll yeah. get a motorbike, it's yeah. all right. Yeah. I'll go, um, out, I'll go out and steal a PW50 instead. Yeah. 
<laughs> so go, go on, Steve. What what do you most enjoy about flying? No, well, that's the reason why I asked. Because I mean, I've got a PPL. Right. Um, and what's a PPL? Private pilots. Pilots. Yeah. Oh, right, sorry. Um, just single engine. Yeah. You know, the same sort of thing, really. Um, but actually, when you get up there, it's not that exciting, is it? Do you know, that's why I asked the question. Yeah, but there's still something about it. You're that, flat out because yeah, you're obviously yeah. visually concentrating, as well as yeah. talking, um, or ra talking to radar yeah. and so blah, blah, blah. So, so I'm just doing end PPL, which is like a cheap version of the PPL because I can't afford a PPL and I can't afford to fly big planes. Um, so I just like little micro lights. But I, I, I just, I don't, it's just everything about it. I like taking off. I like, I like flying over my house. I like going to, like, you, the views you can get from. 3,000 feet uh, mm. like nothing else aren't they and they're not like uh, you know when you're in a when you're in an airline at 30 or 1,000 feet it, everything just looks flat doesn't it but when you're at 3,000 feet you're in amongst it it's amazing have you managed to blag yourself in anything else apart from what you're learning in to obviously an airliner yeah no not not yet no no mm. no just like a little baby C42 which I love to be honest because I feel like the the bigger you go almost the less involved i guess it because flying an airliner i guess must be look for the most part must be a bit boring do you know because you I've just got, i couldn't answer that no you, just, you sat there <laughs> i've been up in a jaguar a I've been have up, you up in a hawk oh, oh really yeah and i've flown both not I yeah yeah off, yeah, yeah it just had a bit of a took the controls yeah. anyway um but yeah unreal yeah amazing but my i'd just love to go up in the spit yes yeah, so i would i yeah 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 i, I would i mean the 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 guys that sponsored me at the TT from uh, flyspitfire.com down in Biggin Hill, they, they, they've they got, I think, three two-seat Spitfires, two or three two-seat Spitfires, and the dream would be to, to get in one of them for a ride. But, they're, I mean, it, it's expensive to run them aeroplanes, isn't it? So they're, two they're, grand to go, isn't it? Something like that, two yeah. Two grand I think for 20 minutes, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Bloody yeah. hell, is it? Yeah, I don't isn't know. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't got that sort of cash, but but just it, the the just the sitting ones, it's like cool. You know, they've, I've I've been up and I've sat in a hurricane and a Spitfire and just just been in that in that kind of cockpit. It's um, yeah, it's awesome. I love suppose it. it's like bike fans, isn't it? Really, you, you can ask someone why they love bike racing. All you're doing is going around in circles, yeah. but there's just it, there's the, just the, something the, about it. There must there? be something about... Big circle, though, TT, isn't it? Big, very big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah very big. I, I, I want to I fly over and do a lap of the TT from there, because yeah. I bet that looks quite cool. But, yeah. I mean, there must be something about aeroplanes and motorcycles, because there seems to be a a lot of motorcycle racers that are interested in general aviation, mm. flying right, aeroplanes. Yeah. There's yeah. A, a more than more than what is kind of... You know, the, the, the percentage speed, of... maybe maybe it's the speed, yeah, the danger know. of it. It doesn't feel fast. I think it's probably that that's yeah. possibly why the adrenaline and the, and the yeah. danger side, you know, of what could possibly go wrong. I suppose, but it's just yeah, yeah, and, and a little bit I suppose of the unknown because you're always testing your own ability mm. to a certain degree. Mm. I mean yeah. that's that segues us nicely, Steve, into um, we can't not talk about it. TT twenty twenty two. Ah oh, yeah, <laughs> when I got, when I the the. When I was testing my ability and got it wrong, <laughs> yeah, your uh, your ego was writing checks. Your, your yeah, talent couldn't. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, but prior to all that, though, you'd had, you'd been going well, but you were really really ill as well, weren't you? It was all right. Yeah, I had I had uh, laryngitis or something mm. like that. My throat was like all swollen up, like outside of this big or ugly double chin. Um, to be honest, I didn't feel horrendous. I think the adrenaline of it all was kind of pulling me through. Yeah. Um, I probably should have felt iller than I was because I, I mean, everyone said I looked pretty bad, um, but other than that, everything was going all right. You know, yeah. practice week was going well. Um, we had a couple of little daft problems with both of the bikes that were kind of fairly, you know, normal daft problem like the belly pan scraping. So we'd bit of fiberglass and the, the couple of um, the it was actually a, 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 a light, a cable to the back light kept burning out the on the rain on light, the, the rain light yeah. on the triumph kept burning out so just daft stuff like that mm. so it was kind of really busy sorting out little problems and riding the bikes and but it was going well i was going quicker each time and then yeah last night of practice it was i'd done i'd done a two laps on the 600 i think and i came in and i was going to do one more. i thought shall i take the big bike out or shall i take 600 out and i thought do you know what because i'm because i'm not 
feeling tip top, I'm going to leave the big bike parked up because I've got a race on that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I left the big bike, went and did one more lap on a six, well, three quarters of a lap on the 600, <laughs> got to Joey's um, 20, 27th milestone. So just after the gooseneck, beginning in the mountain section. And I've lost the front. Uh, oh, sorry, smashed the microphone. Lost the front and... Um, I didn't. I didn't actually know what had happened until well last year because I, sorry, the TT this year because mm. I spoke to one of the marshals. So what's actually happened is one of the marshals I've, that one of the marshals that was there and helped. Pick, yeah, he was there, helped yeah. pick me up. He saw what happened. So I said I've, I've lost the front going in, and then I think the bike's gone into the air fence, pushed the air fence out the way, and then I've gone into the fence that you know the Ooh, stone wall yeah. that the air fence was protecting. So. Um, I've gone in like legs first. But the air fence was protecting the <laughs> nose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> but then it's protecting the stone wall. The wall yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. The, so, so I've gone into the stone wall because uh, the air fence is gone or the rector cell's gone. Uh, feet first. And I broke tib and fib both sides, both femurs. And my femurs, well, I saw the x rays, my femurs were in like like four or five pieces smashed smashed the foot yeah this one was like you know what is it a compound fracture when it's out when it yeah. comes out yeah so that one's come out scraped along the floor it had like a, on the x-ray it's got like an edge you know like if you scrape a scrape something on the floor and it like has that flat edge to yeah. it yeah 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 so uh yeah i think this i did this was your right leg this was my right leg yeah but left yeah. leg was Hang on a minute, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, right leg was sticking out, left leg was in a load of pieces as well, but it's still inside the bag. Yeah. A <clears throat> um, couple of ribs, a couple of vertebra. I think I punctured a lung. I punctured the, the, not the actual lung, you know, when you kind of do the bag that the lung's yeah. in. And they say you've got a punctured lung and everyone worries, but it's actually fine. Um, and and bang me a bit of my tongue, like that. So I was going like that, bit my tongue. So my tongue was, like, black and swollen up. Um so uh, other than that, I was all right. <laughs> Tip top, ready to yeah, go again the, yeah, the following day. Yeah. But um, you don't remember any of, of of the crash? No, I could. there's bits that come back like, I can't remember the crash, but I can remember being put on a helicopter and I can remember the helicopter lifting off and then it goes blank. And then I can remember being in like a room at hospital, I think, I'm guessing at Nobles, where there was like putting cannulas and tubes and catheters and there was blood everywhere and there was like, you know, and there's hundreds of doctors and nurses running around like a scene of casualty. And then my girlfriend and my dad came in just to say hello. Um, and then they put me on a on a little a uh, little beach craft. Yeah. Um, and flew me over to Aintree Hospital. They must have flown me to John Lennon Airport and then ambulanced me to Aintree Hospital. So I was in Aintree Hospital for six weeks, something like that. Um, but they didn't take my leg off straight away, so... Uh, How, when did you, when, when were you compass mentis of what had happened? Um, during that bit in the in Nobles when they kind of woke me up or I woke up yeah. and my, my dad and my girlfriend came in and I knew I knew what had happened. I knew that my legs were smashed up. I knew that I'd crashed. Um, did you realise how bad your legs were at that point? Um, not really. No. No, I don't think so. I mean... You never really worry about it, do you? No. Do you know, like no. that. Thinking back, when I've had other crashes, you're always. You know, well, this is like, my opinion, but you're always of the mentality is you're going to get better as fast as you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it, an injury. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. 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 So I didn't. I didn't really think about. Oh, I've just had another crash. Another crash. Broken my legs again. Um, so it was off to hospital, and um, yeah, I was kind of. I think I was just in and out of consciousness for the because it it, hurt, it bloody hurt a lot. And I remember there were, it was kind of the, the the amount of drugs they needed to stop it hurting was virtually sedating me. That you know I was yeah. virtually virtually anaesthetizing me completely. Mm. So it was um, I was kind of drifting in and out of either either it really hurt or I was kind of unconscious, kind of that weird bit for a few days. And then I got compartment syndrome in my calf, in my right calf. They actually I think they'd fixed it. So. The, the tib and fib on the right-hand side, they're fixed. And then, like, a day later, it started, like, swelling up and really, really hurting. So I'm making a big song and dance about how much it hurts. Um, 
and eventually the, I go back into um, the theatre and they have a look and try and sort it out. But what's happened is it's sw- like, so when you get arm pump, you know, comp- mm-hmm. like compact compartments, you know, same sort of thing. So when people complain about arm pump, it's just the, their arms pumping up and it restricts the blood flow to your hands. So you can't feel your hands, your hands hurt, your arms hurt. So the same thing was happening in my leg, but rather than just for like a 20 minute race or a 20 minute track day session, it was kind of like, all the time just the whole time yeah. so what it's done is it's constricted all the blood flow, flow to my foot and my foot just died it just had no fresh blood for like however many hours days and it just died so they said look well, we can either they tried to fix it and try to do a few bits i was in and out of the operating theater a couple of times with it but they just kind of it kind of got to a point where they said look you can you're either gonna have a foot that doesn't really work and it's going to be very difficult to walk on for a long time, or we'll just have done and chop it off, and you get a prosthetic, and hopefully you'll be back on your feet within six months. So it was a bit of a no-brainer, really. Yeah. Um, so was that a decision that they asked you there and then while you were, you know, you were while fully I was conscious? Ha- and, well, I was, or... I was, I was conscious, but I was like off my tits. Right. So they don't ask your dad and say what? What would he say? I'm not sure if they asked anyone else to be honest. Right. Um, my girlfriend was there a lot, so. They probably asked her, but she was like, it was pretty traumatic for her yeah, as well. Course, so yeah. um, they normally, you normally sign off pre-op. Yeah, yeah, fix it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, doesn't matter what you do. Get, yeah, that's what you. Get yeah, you get you get one of them yellow forms, don't yeah. you, with the like duplicate thing, and they, you kind of saying, yes, I want you to fix it, and if that means, well, basically, it off, right, basically, whatever the circumstance. Yeah, if that means I die, then I've signed it away. So yeah. kind of you. Um, yeah, it's one of them a little bit. So if you if they need to take it off, but no, I did. It was a it was a decision that they put in front of me and said, Fair play. "Do you want to? Wh- what do you want to do?" Um, the, it was funny. There was a couple of doctors. There was one doctor particularly who, right from the start, was quite honest with me and said, "Look, it needs to come off." And there was a couple more that tried a couple of times to do what they could, so yeah. it didn't come off. So it was. Whilst I knew that it was probably going to end up coming off, at least they tried, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, whether they did the, you know, I don't know whether, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, you know, I don't know if they could have done no. anything else. The problem was, because <clears throat> I had, it wasn't just that injury that they was concerned about, the, both femurs were smashed to bits as well, that that tib and fib were broken, so it wasn't a, just a case of worrying about that. Every yeah. time I was in theatre, there was like, right, we need to fix this, we need to fix that, and then if we've got time, we'll have a look at that. Right, yeah, yeah. So it was it was a bit of one of them. I, I mean, I think if, if I'd have gone in just with the injuries to that leg, the chances of me still having it, I think, m- may, may be greater. You don't know. I no. mean, yeah. No. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the end result is I crashed a bike and I've come out of hospital with um, one leg less. <laughs> But you know, on the, on the positives, it's below my knee, so I've still got my own knee, which oh, makes say, a, oh. it's a massive difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So really, I've just lost a foot. Yeah. Um, and do you know? What was it like? First time you got up on that? Um, not very nice. They they um they give you uh they give you a before they give you like a proper prosthetic leg, they 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 have this thing where it's like a big inflatable sock with a steel with a like a steel leg that goes around it and um at this point i'm still in hospital so yeah, like yeah. It, the, the, the scarring hasn't really or the, the the wound hasn't really finished healing my thighs are, my, my upper legs are still in a bit of pain so they kind of and plus because i've been like horizontal for mm. five weeks or whatever you can only stand up for so long at a you're time weak. before you, yep. you're weak mm. you, you, you the blood you can heart can't pump blood to your head so um yeah, it wasn't very nice. And I remember think, remember at first at, in hospital when they talked about taking it off, I remember thinking, you know, that you see all these people in the Paralympic Games and the Invictus Games and all the things they can do with one leg. Like, you know, I, I, sh- I ought not to be able to use it as an excuse. And then the first time I got up on it, I was like, Jesus Christ, I don't think I'm going to be able to do all that because, like, this is this hurts. This is no fun at all. And yeah. you, it's hard to balance. And But it just comes with time. Like, now I'm now I feel like I'm in a position where when I've got the leg on and it fits, which isn't all the time because we're still the we're still working on getting something that fits and the my 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 existing leg is still 
still changing shape because the muscles are, I'm using the muscles in a different way right, and it's, yeah. the swelling's going down. And, um, so, so the, like I, I was just in yesterday to get the my leg. The development recast. of the prosthetic is ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, so it, I can't wear it all the time because sometimes it just hurts. But when I am wearing it, I almost feel back to normal now. And if I've got trousers on, sometimes I even forget it's there. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. kind of, it's just become just, just, the norm. The norm now, yeah. yeah. And and in a way, like it it's a bit of a pain in the ass getting up in the morning and putting my leg on, but then so is so is you know, some people have to put a hearing aid on in the morning, yeah. some people have to put the glasses on, some you know it's just another thing that Chris has to put his makeup on. I have to do my hair. Yeah, has to do, do his hair. Me to do yeah. his hair every to, morning. Yeah. He has to colour his chin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I know we joke, um, but there must have been some there must have been some shit days on the road to recovery. Yeah, yeah, there was. And, you know, every now and then there still is because I, I can't do the things yet that yeah. that I want to do. I, I can do some things, but there's still a lot of stuff that I can't do and still a lot of stuff that I try to do and it just hurts too much. Yeah. So, um, but them days are becoming fewer and further between. Um, are, and they, are they... Sorry, mate. I'll but that's all right. Me. Are they... Is it real pain or phantom pain? I don't mean but, that to... Yeah, no, stupid because but, there's obviously a lot of nerve damage. In yeah, that. yeah, both. So I get, I get pain. You know, yeah, I, I broke both legs, and yeah. both legs are still healing. Um, so there's 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 pain in both legs and a lack of movement in but a lot. My it's only it's only the last probably three months that I've been able to bend my left leg past kind of ninety degrees. So you know it's. Just discomfort and and immobility, um, but yeah, in answer to your question, there is a lot of phantom pain. Weirdly, if I've got my shorts on and I can see the fact that I'm wearing a prosthetic, I don't. The the phantom pains are uh, the I still get them, but they don't feel quite as pinpoint. It's difficult to explain. When when I'm wearing trousers, I get these phantom pains, and they're in they're in my. I can feel exactly. Like it's be on the side of my big toe, or it'll be on the back of my heel. Like I can feel exactly where it is when I've got my trousers on. Sorry, when I've got my trousers on, and and it looks like I've got a foot. I can feel exactly where they are when I'm wearing when I'm wearing my shorts. The 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 pain almost migrates to the because I can see I haven't got a foot, mm. so my head's kind of almost my because my eyes know my head doesn't have a foot to hurt. The pain kind of migrates further up the leg into kind of where my stump is but when i've got trousers on it looks like i've got two legs and two feet yeah so the pain's in my foot it's a real weird it's a real it's, weird must thing be a weird that sensation, yeah. That, yeah. yeah but it's all like in psychosomatic and in your head and all them long words in it yeah that i don't really that, understand so after all of that sorry chris i'm butting in after all of that you know and the road to recovery um eyes and lows good days bad days yeah you're obviously a strong-willed person, strong-minded. Yeah, maybe, yeah. You know, probably better off asking your missus that. <laughs> um, Snetterton. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't have a go. My, not mine, our uh, BMW One Make series at British yeah. Superbike Series, you know, I've got 50 people on the books racing each other. Have you? you decided, you know, 44 teeth have got a bike there. Yeah. Al, Al you... you your big buddy Fagan's been been riding there all year and decided to have a go. Yeah. How how was that? And and how did you manage to kind of be brave enough to jump back on and uh, have a dig? Uh, to be honest, it, I don't think it was a question of being brave enough. It's like it, it's something racing bikes is something that I've always done, and you know, b before I, before I raced a bike, before I raced at the TT, I knew this could have happened or worse. You know, so it's not. This hasn't come as a surprise, but all right, that's the wrong way to put it. Like, I knew you always know there's a possibility that this can happen, so I don't feel like it's any different, really. Like racing a bike now, I'm no braver than I was before. Do you know, it's just it's just the same, and I've had injuries before that I've that I've recovered from, and this is just another set of injuries that I'll recover from. Recovery is going to be different this time because I'm missing a bit of my leg, but. I think you can still recover and still get to a point where life's where you want it to be. And I don't know. Yeah. It, when, when Fagan said, 
they were going to get hold of one of them BMWs and do some racing on it and do a fancy doing a few rounds. It wasn't... Um, I mean, I did have to pass it with the missus first. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure she's entirely um, on board with it even now, but um, it's if I've always I've, if I've always been the set apart from at two o'clock in the morning at Le Mans. If there's a bike there and there's an opportunity for me to race it, I want to do it. And, and that you know that's probably what got me in this mess in the first place. At the TT, I probably shouldn't have done that extra lap because. I maybe he shouldn't have even been on the bike in the first place because I wasn't feeling tip top, but I just can't say it, like I love it. I just yeah. love doing it, and I want and I want to race bikes, and and I've been lucky enough to have an opportunity to race some amazing bikes, um, and you know like that BMW. They were, I'm, in fact, I'm on the way to Thruxton at the minute. I'm going to Hull to pick the truck up, and then straight to Thruxton in the morning. So, um, I, I can't I can't wait, you know. It's, it's like it, what's yeah what's not to love and to be honest it, it's different now that I've now that I've got this leg because we we'll have to ride the bike in a slightly different way but it's still the same still the same buzz you still you know ride it. anyone who's anyone who's raced a bike or even done a track day will know like there's nothing like it, is there you know just bikes bikes these days are designed to go fast and you can't do that on the road but you can on a track it's great just before we go um Steve's got his quick fire questions. We're going to get into them real quick. But TT 2023, like how it was amazing to be a part of it with you to film the YouTube that we did. People absolutely loved it. I loved it. But the reception you got when you came back, the fact that it had only been a year since you lost your legs, since you had that crash and you come back and it's as it's if like nothing had happened. Like it was amazing to see. Yeah. And do you know what? Since since this crash happened, I've had the support I've had from close family um my, my girlfriend at home and 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 mates but not just not just that support it's been like hundreds of people people that i've never even met mm-hmm. you know you know um because i think the 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 stuff i've done on 44 teeth uh, we've we've got like a you know 44 teeth over the past few years or oh, since it started really it's just been growing and growing and growing and since you know since i started at 44 teeth i feel like you know there's 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 a community of of <clears throat> the community of motorcyclists, community of mates. I feel like I've just got like hundreds of mates that I've mm-hmm. never met, and and they've all got behind me, and I've had like hundreds of messages, thousands of messages, you know, across across like all the uh, social media stuff, and um, just everyone everyone wants me to get better, and I feel like you know when when you have a a difficult day, like like you do when you're recovering from from injury, there's the the fact that. I feel like there's so many people behind me. Yeah, it's it's that's what's got me through the the hard times. Um, because it's difficult to, it's it's difficult to, um, kind of. I feel like it's I feel like it's difficult to fail when, when there's so when there's so many people helping me. Yeah. Like it like there's always, I've always got this like net of support behind me. So what whatever what I've always you know whatever I do. I'm gonna be all right, and that's I think same one... positivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that positivity in it, like it just drives you forward, and I think that's one of the reasons why I've, you know, I've got myself to a reasonable le- level of fitness now, um, because because I've had so much support. But I think you've had that support because of the attitude you've taken towards it. Because it could, you could have gone, do you know what? Oh shit, I've lost a leg. That's it. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done with everything. Yeah. But you just went, you know what? That's that, and this is what I can do now from it. You yeah. got back on a bike. You raced. You 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 were great on the radio. You were all right on the YouTube's, <laughs> and now you've got a new career out of it. Hopefully, with well, the TT. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, like, I wanna. I just wanna live my life. As, yeah. You know, like I I don't want this to stop me doing anything. At the minute, like I say, it's it, I'm not at the, I'm not in a position where I can do all the things I want to do yet. But I feel like I'm getting towards that. And the the. You know, someone someone said to me, someone asked me once, you know, what what what's the your motivation for kind of putting the effort? Because it's not easy, you know. Like mm-hmm. I've still a lot of physio and trying to trying to just trying to get fit again and and stretching and exercise. What what gives you the motivation to do that? And I said, well, the motivation to do that is the the reward of doing the things that you want to do. Yeah. You know, I want to I want to race bikes again. I want to go to the TT again. I'm, I'm not going to race at the TT again, but. I want to go there and be part of it, and I want to, I want to fly airplanes, and I want to walk and run, and if I can do them things, that's that's 
that's the reward. And yeah, hopefully I'll get what's to your, a position. What's your where... biggest goal? My biggest goal. I don't know really now. Um, get married, say get married. Oh yeah, get married. Yeah, yeah. yeah have a long and happy marriage. Now we've already talked about highs and lows. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they hadn't even started yet. <laughs> you wait. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, Steve, quick fires. Come mm -hmm. on, sock it to him. Right, you know the score. Answer it, one or the other. Beer, okay. or, beer or wine? Wine. Blonde or brunette? Brunette. Spitfires or hurricanes? Spitfire. Pineapple or never pineapple on pizza? Uh, never pineapple on pizza. No, no. Ooh. Freak. Jerry Dunlop or Michael Dunlop? Michael Dunlop. Ginger Hall to Ramsey or Ramsey to uh, Cronk the Mona? Ramsey to Cronk. Yeah. Merlin or yeah. Rolls Royce? Uh, Merlin. Rolls Royce yeah. Merlin. <laughs> Romantic night with the missus or a night out with the lads? Uh... It depends if she's going to watch this. <laughs> night out with the lads. Good effort. I'm loving oh. it. Right, last one. Uh, pillion TT ride with Michael Dunlop, or no, or a ride in a Spitfire. Spitfire, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, what would you ask, Steve? Spitfire, probably Dunlop. Would you? Mm. Mm. I would not. I just pillion ride with anyone. No, no, I'll go. I'll go with MD. I would. I'd trust him anyway. But I'd go with Michael. I would, and then I'd just buy a Spitfire one. <laughs> You've probably got a Spitfire in your garage, you know, and you, mate. Boothy, it's been an absolute pleasure. Best of luck Thanks at for having Thruxton. Me. Cheers, mate. Will we see you out at the uh, at the TT next year? You will. Not riding. No, of course. No, 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 Yeah, I'm going to go and, yeah. Can we tag team again? I think so, yeah. Yeah, if we, yeah if, well, if the, if the bosses think we did a good enough job of it. Don't be jealous, Steve. I still love you. Love affair, innit? Right, we'll, we'll do the podcast and me and Boothy will make the videos. He's got a face for podcast on it. <laughs> Hey, Ooh. thanks, mate. Pleasure. Keep Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Steve, another episode in the can. And again, one of those episodes where we could have talked for, for a good hour more about everything that Boobie's been up to. But again, what an inspiration. What a boy. Massively. It wasn't, in all fairness, I wasn't really sure how that one was going to go. Yeah. But uh, he's interesting. He's an interesting character. So strong willed. But just kind of takes it all in his stride. I mentioned like he must have had some dark days, but it was to to kind of just say also at the same time how he has taken it, you know, in his stride. Like he's just got on with it, whereas most people wouldn't have. I think a lot of people would have struggled with the the adaptation of a new life without without a limb. No, exactly. And he's obviously uh, very determined. He's, as you've heard, he's he's back doing a bit of racing. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me if he keep pushing and pushing from that side. It still yeah. floats his boat. Well, that's it for another episode of the TT Podcast. In fact, while you're watching, get your phone out right now. Leave us a rating and a review wherever you listen to your podcast when you're not watching it on TT+. Plus. In fact, do it now. Steve and I will be back next week with our guest, the rooting, tooting, cowboy boot-wearing, Davey Todd. You get two types of people, I feel like. Some that have a lot of pressure and really go downhill with the pressure and i feel like i've always done better the more pressure there is the better i ride like in practice sessions and you go testing like i just really struggle to perform under practice conditions when there is nothing on the line yeah i'm like <clears throat> I, I can't just ride around and go fast I need something there. The first place you can see that episode is right here on TT+. Plus. So make sure you've subscribed, signed up. As I said, it's completely free to do so. And as ever, iomttracers.com for all your TT news and features. Steve, until next time, adios. Adios, amigos. Adios.